remember that before COVID, we were under the weight of his glory. And I felt just the Lord leaning on us a little bit. And so I can't wait to see what the Lord is going to do. Psalms 133. It says, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Everybody say unity. It's like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commands the blessing. Look at your neighbor. Tell him it's there. Where the blessing comes. And what is that blessing? Life forever more. Before you're seated, look at your neighbor and just tell them, let's stay in unity. You may be seated. I want to talk to you on the subject of unity. Unity. It's such an important message. Many of us who have been in the military know that in the military during boot camp training, it, it's common to go on long runs, right? To go on long runs with your platoon or with your unit. And as the soldiers run as a group, they sing different songs. Who remembers that? They sing different songs as they're running. These songs that they sing, they bring identity. They talk about being a soldier in the army. Do I have any soldiers in the army of God this morning? Yeah. Right. So these songs that they sing, they bring, they bring identity, they bring unity, but they also build up an anticipation for the ultimate mission, which they know as soldiers, they're going to go to war. As, as they sing these songs, these songs keep the platoon or the unit tightly knit. Look at someone this morning and tell them we've got to stay tightly knit. Now, going to our scripture in Psalms 133, if you have your Bible this morning, I still carry the, the leather-bound Bible. But when you have the leather-bound Bible, in Psalms 133, at the very top of the scripture, it says a song of ascent, a song of David. Somebody say song of ascent. In fact, these songs of ascent are found from Psalms 120 to 133. You can read your Bible. That when you open your Bible from Psalm 120 to Psalm 133, at the top of the psalm, it says song of ascent. It's a little note. Now, these songs, just as I spoke about the soldiers running as an army, these songs of ascent are similar to those songs. These songs are the songs of the pilgrims. These are the songs of the people of Israel that as the people of Israel were on the move. How many know Victor Arch San Diego? We've been a little bit on the move. How many know the body of Christ has been on the move? That as the people were on the move to their destination, the people of Israel would sing these songs of ascent together. They would sing these songs as they were on the move. You said, where were they going, Pastor? They were on their way to the house of God. They were on their way to Zion. They were on their way to the city of David. They were on their way to the house of the Lord. And they sang these songs. Now, some people travel short distances. Others travel long distances. But no matter the distance, as they sang these songs, there was a preparation and an anticipation for God's house. I know that this morning you're here, but did you come with preparation and anticipation? I saw my wife getting her beautiful skirt ready last night. How many know that's preparation and anticipation? But I want you to, I want you to picture this, that no matter what distance the people traveled, to the house of God, they sang these songs together on their way. 
as they would make the pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the, the feast, they sang, watch this, so that their heart would be prepared to encounter God. I think if this world needs anything right now, it needs to encounter God again. If our country needs anything right now, it's to encounter God again. The devil wants to take people out of church. But we know that if you're going to find God, you've got to find them in the church. And they would sing these songs. Some of these songs were songs of repentance. Others would sing songs of faithfulness and God's provision. Some would sing of his love and his deliverance. Let's look at the scripture. Psalm 121. Look what the Bible says. This is one of the songs. He says, I will lift up my eyes to the hill from where my help comes from. So imagine wherever you are. Think about this. You're traveling. You're traveling. Think about your travels. You're, you're miles away from, from the city of David. You're miles away. But what they're singing is saying, I will look to the hills. They're singing this all the way to the house of God. I, 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 I've looked to the valley. I, I've looked to the problems. But I'm going to look to the hills from where my help comes from. Look at Psalms 122. My wife mentioned it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I imagine them traveling on their way to the house of the Lord, singing these songs. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I've been many places, and I've walked in one way, and I've walked out the same. But when I get to the house of the Lord, something is able to happen in my life. Look at Psalms 126. It says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. Oh, my God. Just think for a moment, you're on your way to the house of You're remembering struggling. You're remembering your storm. You're remembering your struggle. You're remembering your time of bondage, but you're on your way to the house of the Lord. And you remember how the Lord brought you out. And the Lord brought you out of captivity. And the Lord brought you out of bondage. And it was as if the Lord restored your dream. And as you make your way to the house of the Lord, you say, it's in the house of the Lord where my dreams are awakened, where my visions come back, where my purpose is restored. When David sang about going to the house of the Lord in Psalms 133, he says, how beautiful is it when the people of God dwell in unity? That David's affection was not only on the house of the Lord, but his affection was on the people of the Lord. He said, how beautiful is it? This place this morning, I came to tell you that you are a part of this spiritual family. Can you look at someone and tell them we're family today? The world needs to see this. The world needs to see this. The world needs to be able to see and be re reacquainted with what unity looks like, what family looks like. The world needs not only a beacon of hope, but the world needs a beacon of love. Let love shine out of this place. Let compassion shine out of this place. Let the spirit of family shine out of this place. Somebody say amen. I'm going to speak fast. Three things about unity. Number one, there's a misconception of unity. There's a misconception of unity. You say, Pastor, what's the misconception of unity? I'll tell you right now. The misconception is that we all have to be the same. The misconception of unity is that we all have to be the same, that we all have to talk the same, dress the same, dress the same, Believe the same things. Beware of that. Because it's a lie from the pit to hell. How could we all be the same when God created us all to be so different? How could we be the same here when you get to heaven, no one's going to be the same. You're going to see people of different colors and different creeds. That's why Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. Every nation. The, the Greek word for nation is the word ethos. 
if you translate it to the original language, it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every ethos, every ethnicity. I came to tell you, heaven's not going to be full of a bunch of Mexicans with mustaches. Heaven's not going to be full of a bunch of brown pride Mexicans. Heaven's not going to be a, 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 a full of one color, one race, one creed. Come on, we've all been created uniquely. We've all been created different. Come on, somebody. I'm proud of who God has created me to be. And I'm proud of who God has created you to be. Let, let me tell you, there's a misconception about unity that we all have to be the same. But let me say this to you is that we're living in a world that if you're not the same, they devour you. If you're not like them, they devour you. They devour you on the news. They devour you on social media. They, de they smile on your face, but they devour you behind your back. And what the world needs is they need to see a church that's unified and diverse and comfortable in their own skin and comfortable in their own calling and comfortable in their own vision. Oh, my God, I came to tell you I'm comfortable with what God has created me to be. It didn't happen overnight. It might have taken about 10 years because when I came into the house of God, I wasn't happy with who I was. I wasn't happy with how I dressed. I wasn't happy with how I spoke. But then the Holy Ghost arrested my life and the Lord began to show me, son, I made you to be like that. Don't curse what I created. I came to tell you, if you ever wanted to feel good, you're in the right place. Because we don't all got to be the same. And, and you don't all got to be like me. Now, I want you to be like me in terms of godliness and, 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 and all that kind of thing. But you can't be like me. Come on, somebody. I think when God made me, he broke the molds. As long as you try to be like me, you're only going to be second best. That's not an arrogant statement. That's a fact. As long as you try to be like your neighbor, you're only going to be second best. That's why God gave you a fingerprint. Your fingerprint is unique. Your fingerprint is your identity. Go ahead and be the person that God has called you to be. But be more like Jesus. Love like Jesus. Forgive like Jesus. Accept people like Jesus. Someone say unity. Because when you become who God's called you to be, he'll use you to make a difference in people's lives. Man, this morning, this place is packed. So probably we may have to add another service next week. I'll tell you why. For safety reasons, but also because God is going to use you. He's going to use your personality. He's going to use your talent. He's going to use your ability to bring somebody hope this morning. So the first thing is that there's a misconception of unity. The second thing is that there's, and this don't overlook this point, but there's a might in unity. Come on, just take your strong arm and just go like that. Come on. Ooh, we're mighty when we're together. How beautiful is it when the people of God dwell in unity? Jesus, when he was talking about prayer, he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. But how many know a church that's comfortable in who they are? And a church that's comfortable in their calling? And a church that's unified is a church that's mighty? I came on a Sunday morning to welcome you back to the house to welcome you back. Come on, this is our house. Come on, this is our church. These are our people. So I, I came to tell you, welcome home, but I also came to tell you, we're stronger together. I, I've told you many times, a, a three-fold cord is not easily broken. There's might when we move together. There's might. <laughs> man. The Bible says it in the, in the book of e Ecclesiastes. I believe it's in chapter 4. He says when it's one, they can be overtaken. But when there's two, you got a fight coming on. 
when, when COVID tried to get a hold of our brother, Gilbert, who testified this morning, how many rejoice to see him? Yeah. And not only Gilbert, but anybody who's become ill. I came to tell you, we let the devil know, you come coming for our people, you got a fight coming to you. You want to afflict our people, all right, you're picking a fight with us. Come on, you want, you want to afflict our people with cancer and, and sugar diabetes and you want to try to bring COVID? Okay, devil, you got a fight coming on because we're a family and we know how to come together and we have learned how to fight in the spirit and we have learned how to pray. We've seen cancer healed. We've seen COVID healed. We pe see people get back up on their feet. I don't know who I came to speak to, but you are a part of this family and this family is not weak. This family knows how to pray in the midnight hour. This family knows how to do spiritual warfare. The, oh, my God, we are a mighty army. We are a mighty family. All you need to do is do like what I did with Gilbert. I was praying one morning, and I said, I looked at the devil. I said, no. And then I looked to God. I said, no, God. And when I told God no, I felt the peace of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord told me in that prayer, he says, Gilbert's going to be all right. Because we have been seated in heavenly places and we have authority in the spirit. Some of you need to learn to rise up and say, devil, no, you can't have my family. You can't have my marriage. You can't have my children. You can't have my health. I'm not a part of an ordinary church. I'm not a part of a motivational church. I'm a, I'm a part of a... Whew. I don't even know what to say. I want to be careful. But I'm a part of a church that knows where the power comes from. And how many know when we're together, we're mighty? Come on, just touch two people and tell them we're mighty. No matter, no matter how weak you might feel this morning, you're strong because we're together. No matter how down you might feel this morning, we're strong because you're in this room. I, I can't tell you, I don't care how weak you feel, you make us better. I don't feel how inadequate you feel, you make us better. I, you may come, he says, I don't got it all together yet. Pat, don't matter, don't matter, don't matter. You make us better. That's right, that's right, that's right. See, I don't even own a seat, suit. We'll, we'll buy you a suit. You make us better. Well, I don't even know how to comb my hair. Don't worry about it. We'll teach you how to do it. We want you here because you make us better and you make us stronger and you bring something with you that we don't got. You've got a calling, you've got a purpose, you've got a destiny. Oh, I feel the Lord. Can you feel him? We're mighty. And no matter how weak you feel, we're stronger because of you. Unity is we, not me. Unity is we. Don't turn that W upside down. Someone say we. Unity is we, not me. I didn't come to church this morning to get my blessing. I came to church to help my brother get his blessing. I didn't come to church this morning to take my blessing and go home. I came to the house of God because it's we, not me. I came to the house of God to help my sister get her blessing, help my brother get their blessing. Because David said, when the people of God dwell in unity, that's where the blessing is commanded. Something happens when the people of God come together. And the devil, he tried to be cool. He tried to be slick with it. Come on, somebody. But how many know there's power when we come together? Everybody, give God a big praise. I'm done as a place offering.
Someone say unity. There's might in unity. But lastly and finally, the master has a plan through unity. How many of you this morning say, Jesus is not just my savior. Jesus is my master. They called him many things, you know, rabbi, rabboni, teacher. They called him Lord, but I love Pastor Vic when the disciples called him master. Because he's the master of the universe. He's the master of my destiny. He's the master of all things. He's the master. There's nothing too hard for the master. And how many know on this Sunday morning, the master is still in control. And the master still has a plan. And the... Somebody say master. And the master still has a plan, Jose. Be not discouraged, brothers and sisters. The master hasn't taken his hands off the remote control. Come on, somebody. He's still calling the shots. Heaven is still open. Nothing scares him. Nothing shakes him. Nothing worries him. He says, because I'm the master. And the master has a plan through unity. His plan is to command the blessing there. His plan. That's why Jesus, who is the master, and he came. And that's why he said, we're, 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 we're two or three. Look at, look at, look at. Touch. Someone say Touch. Isn't like the devil during COVID, he don't want you touching nobody. See, the devil knows a word. Don't touch nobody. Even some churches fall for that. Don't touch nobody. Don't touch nobody. They're not reading the same Bible as me. Everybody wants to preach Jesus, but they don't preach what Jesus preached. He said, if two or three touch and agree on anything... The master will do what you are asking him to do. The master has a plan. And what I believe as I close is that he wants to give us the power to do the job. I've just been feeling this. For our church. You know, Gideon started out with a real big army, didn't he? Who remembers that story? And the Lord said, you mighty men of valor, right? So he started with a real big army, and the Lord told him, shrink it. Shrink the army. So he shrunk it. So Gideon was feeling good with his army. He tells him again, it's too big, shrink it. He shrunk that army all the way down to 300 soldiers. But they weren't an ordinary 300. They were a mighty 300. What I believe God is going to do what he's saying. He says, I don't need everybody, but I just do need somebody. He's saying, if I could get whoo, 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 300 elite unified people. You remember when Jesus appeared after his resurrection, he appeared to 500 who reads their Bible? 
But only 120 showed up to the upper room. And I, have, I felt the Spirit of the Lord saying to our church, look, I, I don't need everybody, but I need somebody. And if I could get 300 unified, one mind, one accord, one focus, unified, walking in brotherly love, Taking care of one another. Loving one another. I, I, I heard the Lord say, I'm going to pour out an anointing on them. That's going to be much more powerful than they have ever experienced. We are going in to a season of power. Ooh, don't, don't look at me like that. Don't, don't get scared. So I'm getting nervous. Huh? I was just blowing in the mic. So I'm going to say power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. There's going to be so much power in you. So much power in here. I'm telling you, you, you're going to wake up, you're going to learn how to tap into the power. Because something happens. I feel the power now. Something happens when we come into unity. He says the blessing is commanded there. The blessing. Someone say blessing. Read a little bit further. He says life evermore. Life is there. Life is there. Life is there. Death is here. Life is there. Death is here. Life is there. Frustrations here. Life is there. Divisions there. Gossips there. Fears there. Life is there. Life, 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 life. Life falls on the unity. Life, life, life. I'm trying to teach you. Life. See, some of you want power. Learn this. Life, life, life. I say the Lord's going to give you power. What I say to you is that life is going to flow through you. Watch. We come to church to receive life. But if that's all you do, you're missing it. For many years, I don't come to church just to get life. For many years, I come to church to give life. Some of you are missing what I'm saying. Life produces life. And when there's unity in the house, the Bible says you shall lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. There's going to be so, I just feel God right now. Who feels the Lord? There's going to be so much life coming out of you. It's going to even change the way you look. You know, some, you know something dead looks like it's dying. You see somebody say, that person looks like they're dying. It may not be a sickness of body, but it's a sickness of heart. Woo this is so strong. This is strong. I'm just prophesying to you. But the Lord is going to fill you with life. <laughs> life, life, 
life, life, life. There's so much new life. Just by simply you coming to this place. Preparing your heart every week. Ironing your skirt on Saturday night. Preparing your heart. I love that song, Louis. The Lord used you on Facebook. That I love following you on Facebook. Except you put it always all caps. And he said on Facebook, let's go over to the outreach where everybody's praising the Lord. Join with all the treasures out of darkness in every inner city of the world. I got saved in victory outreach. I'll never, ever be the same. Let's go over to the outreach where they're lifting up Jesus' name. You know what that is? That's a song of ascent. That's a song of ascent. I was once a drug addict. I was once a gang member. I was once broken. I was once sick. I was once lost. But I walked into the church called Victory Outreach and I received life. I received life. Is there anybody here that you're ready to unify that life might flow out of you? Life. Life. Not just in you, but through you. Lift your hands all over this place. Yes, fill my cup, fill 